Hey friend, and welcome back to RGD Gaming, the least toxic, most fun community in all of gaming. This video is going to be a bit different than my other videos, and I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the current state of Wild Rift, the player base, content creators, and my role in all this. I'll use this match to illustrate a lot of my points because this is relatively common to see what I'm going to show you in this match. And at this point in the season, I just had fallen to 39 marks, and at 40, I was ranked 3,800 in North America. Um, so that means this game is probably pulling from a pool of player, players that are either the top 10,000 or so, maybe worst case, the top 20,000 players in North America right now. Wait until you see how this match plays out, what happens, and then even the fact that one of my teammates was a challenger a couple seasons ago, and I'm not going to specifically point out them, but they are one of the people that makes the mistakes that, one of the mistakes that I'm going to point out. Now, I want to start out and say that while I am going to talk about my team, this is not to single out all of them, it's not to say it's entirely their fault. I don't do that great in this match either, and I make mistakes too. If you watch this game or any of my matches, you'll see I make mistakes, everyone does. Um, so I'm really not trying to specifically just throw them all under the bus. Um, I'm just trying to use this game as an example of something that regularly happens at the highest ELO in Wild Rift right now. So Viper, Humor, Miko, and I'm Mini Kitty. If you or your friends see this, we're all good, and I'm not trying to throw you guys under the bus. Like, you're fine, you have some things to learn, but so do I. Uh, but a lot of the player base does, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. You know, there's just no good way to block their names out. I am going to use the fast forward in a lot of this uh, video, and I'm going to talk about, you know, mostly what I think and a little bit of the gameplay. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is that, well, let me talk about this right here. So Nautilus having a misfortune engage onto a Jin in the first couple of seconds is not a great call. Nautilus wants to traditionally engage, and, you know, that's okay. Uh, but if we're in a weird spot like we were where he was kind of by himself and I was catching up You know, that's not something that you want to do and you'll see things like that Actually, if you watch my last video titled your MFing wrong I talk a lot about that and how people just get stuck into this is how the champion plays I want to engage early I want to root them and take advantage of that rather than letting the team the other team make the mistakes and letting the game sort of play out and whatever happens happens and not just being stuck in what you're going to do. Um, the player base in Wild Rift, I think this is maybe, this is my own thoughts. I don't know that I've heard anybody else talk about it this way, but I think that there is a tier of players that is really, really good at the game. For instance, probably Darkbreaker, D'Enzio, uh, Royal. Royal was the number one mid in and it, or in EU. Those players are so much better than the next tier of players, but what happens is, I think in, let's use North America, there's probably only 50, maybe 100 players that are that good, and of those 50 or 100 players, 10 or so of them are just even better and at a whole different level than those other 50. But what happens is, in order to make matches and have games go off and have people not waiting 10 or 20 minutes, you end up having to fill in or backfill the player base in. And I don't think that's anybody's fault necessarily. There's, I think, one-tenth the amount of players playing Wild Rift right now. I'll actually pull the numbers and put graphs up on the screen right now. Uh, but there's probably one-tenth the amount of players in Wild Rift than there is in League of Legends. So you literally just can't make grandmaster you know 0.01 percent of the player base like it is in league of legends because you won't have matches and so what happens is you end up having these really great players be in these matches with players that are not so great and you know traditionally in league probably shouldn't really be there um so that's what i really think is happening more than anything else with the games that are super lopsided is you're getting these matchups, and then once somebody that's really good sort of starts taking over, it's very hard, even for somebody else who's good, to sort of come back to that from that. You'll see me here. I am trying to tell my Nautilus to stop engaging. We are behind. I need to poke the enemy Jin before we engage. And what I really want to do as misfortune here is I want to poke with my double tap, poke, and then once we get them a little bit low, lower than you might think, you know, probably a third health, 
then I want Nautilus to engage with this hook or engage with this ultimate. I'll use my ultimate. I'll put a slow on them and hit them that way. But for whatever reason, this Nautilus doesn't seem to understand the kit. And you see that quite often and regularly in games that people just don't understand, you know, duo pairs or partners and matchups that they're playing in. And honestly, it's partially, you know, I'll take some responsibility for it. As a content creator, it's my responsibility to educate the player base. If I'm not doing a great job at that, then there is some responsibility on me and the other content creators to educate players and teach them what they need to know. Now, obviously, some people just don't watch content. They don't care to learn and they don't care to get better. But I do take some responsibility. The other thing, and I'm going to hopefully this doesn't hurt anybody's feelings, but it's your responsibility, too. If you let these players that don't understand the basics of engaging as a duo lane get into the highest echelon of matches, that's on you. Like This should not be happening, uh, but it does. It happens regularly. And while I am going to say it's your fault, I believe you can be better. So if you're watching this or listening to this and you're hard stuck at Diamond or Master, you can get to Grandmaster. You sh the mistakes that people make are so glaring right now at the highest tiers. I believe you can be better. But you have to drop your ego. You would not believe how often I hear people blame their teammates or say games are uncarryable or it's always their team that's at fault. Sure, are teammates to blame for some matches? Yes. Are they to blame for every single match? If you're running a sub 50% win rate on your account, you're doing something wrong if you have, I'd say, at least 150 to 200 games. You need to be a little bit better than that, and you need to be at least better than 50%, and the best players hit 60%. Um, me personally, I'm always trying to be in that 54, 55 range. I sometimes fall below, I sometimes squeak above, but that's where I'm at right now. But if I do that, I can consistently climb, and I can consistently outpace some of these bad players. The other thing you'll notice with this match is you, you saw me talking. I think I said, I maybe mentioned it already, but maybe not. We're playing against five attack damage champions. Okay, just pause the video and think for a second. What does that mean to you? You need to build armor. You need steel caps. I don't care what boots you want. I don't care what you think you need. You need to build steel caps. It gives you a 15% reduction in attack damage from the enemy. And you need to build at least one armor item for whoever you are. The other thing you'll notice is we're against um, a Scion and a Set. Okay, so if you're an attack damage champion, what are you thinking? I need to build Serpent's Fang. So you should have... So this match, the builds really... I know people get stuck and they want their builds. But you literally need Serpent's Fang, Steel Caps, and one armor item. And you should be doing that basically immediately here. And you're going to do a couple of things. Serpent's Fang is going to reduce all of Set and Scion's shield, which is going to help us out a ton. Steel Caps are going to reduce damage by 15%. And your armor item, which is probably for, let's say, you know, me, Jax, and Wukong, is going to be Guardian Angel. So you'll be able to come back. Now, I don't care what order you do that in, but in your first three items, because most matches are done before three items, you need to get those. But you'll notice in our builds... They don't do that. Um, most of my team, I don't want to say two out of um, my teammates do build steel caps and two of them don't. And the one that was a challenger actually doesn't build steel caps. So you can't get stuck in like, oh, I need to build this. This is what my champion builds because there's so much value in the steel caps and the armor item in this match because you get damage reduction against everybody on their team. Um, and that's again that's partially on me it's partially on the player base because people i think they should know that at this point if you're in the top 10 or 20,000 players uh in a game you should understand the basics of you know buying the right boots and then just some minor itemization thing i actually have a couple videos on itemization they're the most basic um, weapons and itemization guides that i can think of if you go watch those, so if you if you were not sure what you should be buying in this match, that you should have steel caps, that if you're an attack damage champion, you should be getting Serpent's Fang early, 
then you need to go watch those videos or watch some video about just how to do some basic itemization against the enemy team. Um, I'm, you know, I don't know what's better to build your armor item second or third. There's probably some champions that could go first, depending on what you're actually building for the armor item. Like if I was a mage, I'd probably build that armor item first just to have damage reduction. Like when I play Morgana in the jungle against five attack damage champions, I build my armor item first. And so you see we have, when I was talking, I saw another kind of weird engage. But we're having these weird engagements on the enemy where Scion is basically everywhere this match. He's all over us when we're out of position. And when we don't have a tower to hide under, and even when we have one with low health, he's coming around and he's killing us. So um, another thing that you'll notice, uh, our jungle, who might not be a jungle main, maybe he's a top jax, and that, that's fine. Everybody's got to learn or should learn jungle at some point. It's really the second position that I think people should learn. So if I, if I had to pick how to learn or what to do as far as what roles, you pick the one that you're most comfortable with first. For me, it was ADC. And then the second role I think everybody should learn is jungle here. See, like right here, he jumps away from Baron in order to engage the enemy. There's 200 health on Baron. And rather than smiting that and just staying there and getting the smite and getting Baron, all of a sudden he jumps away, he gets stunned, and what he should have done is just backed into the pit, finished Baron, and then jumped out of there. I honestly don't care if he leaves me. If we get Baron, we're in such a better position, but we got we have inhibitor turrets, we have a wave pushing in our mid, we have another one coming in our bottom wave, and now here you can see me typing to my team saying, like, you gotta build armor. Now so we have two waves already pushing in, and if we had Baron right now, we could get these things pushed out, potentially take down a couple of their towers, because we haven't even got their tier one towers on either side of the map. We've just got the mid. So they have so much protection, they can back off relatively easily, get into their towers, and instead we're just in this super weird spot where now they're getting inhibitor towers because we didn't smite Dragon. Um, and it's just little things like that that, again, I, I understand this Jax might not be a, um, a jungle main, but you need to understand that, you know, your role pretty much when you're in the Dragon Pit or Baron Pit or whatever it is, is to smite and just win that battle. Uh, but instead, we let a Jin out smite it. And you can see Bran saying, focus ADC. It's fine. I don't have a problem with that. And the enemy basically gets a free dragon because they got Baron. Had we had Baron, um, we would have been able to contest that. But now we're also in, a, again, we're in a sort of a weird spot here where I don't think we should be engaging because their entire team was on dragon and we've got to back off and get out of there. And we're doing pretty well, but Wukong and Brand aren't there. And so we really need them in order to fight. You really want advantaged fights so we're fighting with more people but instead we took a 3v4 there and that happens now wukong is re-engaging which i'm not super comfortable with because their team was obviously still there from that fight um and i go down again um you saw me a couple of times in this match sort of i'm like retreating and then i turn back around and re-engage because my team is uh, because while I disagree with their decision, it's better to do something with your team that's a bad decision than to just leave them to die. Um, and you saw me again trying to tell my team that they need armor. And now we're in a weird spot. We have one inhibitor turret. Um, we kind of can't catch... Let's see if we can catch Scion here. Fortunately, we're able to catch Scion, so that's perfect. Now we need to back off see if we can catch their jungle out and you know despite all these things okay so we get another one so now we have two of them down and one of us we have bare enough lanes pushing in so we're kind of in a bad spot there and we need to clear this stuff out um, but if we didn't have our lane shoved in so far from that baron push we would basically get a free elder and possibly a free baron as well um, and we get another kill and now I'm pinging that, you know, I want to go to Elder and fight for that. Uh, but I 
man, it's just like everything's so hard because we're so shoved in. But I'm going to go there. And this is kind of the fight for the match, if you will. And you see Jax. He's like clearing a wave. Like the fight for Elder is happening. And he's in the lane. And you just, you know, again, I, I, I'm not trying to pick on Jax here. But you can see some, some of the things he's doing are just like so glaringly obvious. Now, he needs to be on this Elder Dragon and getting it. So let's see if we get it. He does. Great job, Jax. And now we need to get out of there. So Wukong needs to back off. I want to be out of there too. And unfortunately, oh, I believe we get a kill. So that's good. But we're just too pushed in at this point. I mean, there's basically no way that Wukong is going to hold off three full waves with how much um, and two champions. And so we lose. This is the state of Wild Rift. We need to learn more. We need to be better as a community, and we just need to play a little bit more. And as the player base grows, I think this stuff will go away at the top tiers. So make sure that as the player base grows, you're hitting the higher ranks, you're learning, you're improving your game. That way, you don't have to play with players that do things like this, because it can be frustrating. Hopefully I see you on the Rift. GG.